right, in this video cheat sheet, we're going to be configuring an IBGP peer with route reflectors. First, we're going to start off with some baseline show command, show IP BGP and show IP BGP summary to see what's already in the BGP routing table and to see if any uh, IBGP adjacencies are formed. Then we're going to do the debug IP BGP in command uh, on router 4 to, to see what updates are coming in and see what changes as we go through this process. Then we're going to configure uh, an IB, IBGP peer route reflector uh, relationship where a router 4 is the route reflector and the other routers in autonomous system 1 are route reflector clients. And then we're going to finish up with some verification commands. So let's look at the network topology. As I mentioned before, router 1 is going to be the route reflector for autonomous system 1 and the other routers that want to speak BGP, routers 2, 3, 5, and 6, are going to be route reflector clients of router 4. So let's get started. On router 4, we're going to turn debug IP BGP in so that we can see how things unfold as we go through this process. Go over to router 3 and do a show IP BGP sum and a show IP BGP to see once again what adjacencies are there and what's in the routing table. Now there aren't any adjacencies for router 3 and the only uh, prefix that's in the BGP table is directly connected to router 3 and the other routers 2, 5, and 6 are like that. So let's configure an IBGP route reflector, route reflector client uh, relationship between these routers and autonomous system 1. If you went through the configuring IBGP peer video cheat sheet, these two commands are all you need to do to get an IBGP best practice relationship up and running. And this is what we're going to do for 2, 3, 5, and 6, which is what I like about route reflector and route reflector clients because the client's configurations are all the same. They're all trying to peer back to router 4. So I can just copy and paste the same commands on all my clients. So now that I've got the clients configured, let's look at what we're going to do on the route reflector. This is the same as with the clients where we're specifying the neighbor, which being the loopback address, the remote AS, and then also the neighbor and where we're updating our packets from, where we're updating it from the loopback address. So we've already talked about that, so I'm going to throw that in there real quick on router 4. And we may start seeing some debug output, which, which we are. We're starting to see some things are going on between router 4 and the other routers. What makes a route reflector a route reflector is this command that I just highlighted, where you tell the route reflector that this neighbor, neighbor 2, is going to be your client, and neighbor 3 is going to be your client, and so on and so forth. The client does not realize that it's a client. Router 2, 3, 5, and 6, they don't realize that they're a client. All they know is they're peering with router 4. But router 4 knows that they're clients, and that comes with certain responsibilities, and that will be covered in the configuration guide why a route reflector, route reflector client hierarchy, uh, or just relationship is of benefit. So I just configured router 4 with the route reflector client configuration. So let's go back over to router 2 and see what it looks like now. Well before we, we didn't have a whole lot. Well I did actually I did it on router 3 so let's go back over to router 3. Router 3 didn't have a whole lot before but now it has an adjacency up to 4 and it's received all these prefixes. So we did some baseline show commands. We did a debug command. We configured our IBGP route reflector and route reflector client and did some and then finished up with some show commands.